Hey guys, uh, James here, and today we're going to be swapping out the spring on my fuel pressure regulator uh, on my 2001 M250 here with the 7.3 power stroke. I got a new spring kit from Rip Raff, and some of the other videos on YouTube kind of the lighting's not very good or they kind of missed a couple steps that I think will make the job a lot easier and a lot cleaner for you. So yeah, I just wanted to show you that today. So yeah, let's get started. All right, so here's everything you're going to need for this job. Um, here's the 5 8 wrench. You'll need that to disconnect the fuel line from the regulator housing. Um, you'll need an Allen wrench to actually disconnect the regulator itself from the fuel bowl. Here's the, I'm actually putting a new housing on there. So I got this in a kit from Amazon and actually it was the only thing useful out of the entire kit. But yeah, the reason that I like this regulator so much is you, if you can see in there, you see that little recessed spot um, for the spring to sit in and that's really useful. The one that's in the truck that comes standard uh, doesn't have that. So it makes it easier for the spring to get all jacked up in there and that's no good if that happens. So yeah, I really like how that has that recessed spot in there. And then here's our spring kit. Uh, again, I got this from Riff Raff, always great guys. Um, I'm gonna be using the gold one today. And uh, yeah, and the last thing I wanted to note, um, something else that came with that kit is this poppet right here. And this poppet is actually for a 6.0 power stroke, not 7.3, even though the kit was marketed for 7.3. And they look exactly the same, but there is a tiny difference. In the one that comes with the 7.3, there's a teeny tiny hole in the end right there. And you can see there's no hole on the end of this one. And what that hole does is it allows the pressure to bleed off while the engine is off. Uh, and without that hole, you're going to risk uh, leaks and damaging your injectors and a bunch of other bad stuff that you don't want to do so yeah anytime you find something cheap on Amazon or eBay and wonder why it's so cheap it's probably something like that so yeah when I get the regulator pulled off I'll actually show you the poppet that I'm talking about so you'll be able to see the hole on it so yeah so this is garbage for us today but yeah I just wanted to make that quick note so yeah be careful out there all right here we are on the passenger side and I've got my diesel can down there because you need to uh, drain the fuel bowl to be able to do this. Otherwise, uh, as soon as you disconnect the fuel line, your fuel bowl is going to empty all over your engine. So you don't want that to happen. So yeah, I got my diesel can down there. And then if you can see, I've got a hose that's running from the can all the way up to, you see where that hose is connected at right there? It's uh, just behind the uh, EBP stem valve thing it almost looks kind of the same as that without the nut on the end of it yeah and you just slide the hose it's uh that that thing right there and you can see the hose on the end of it and that's the i'm sure you guys already know this that's where the drain valve from your fuel bowl comes so yeah you just slide the hose over the end of that and then when we open up the uh the valve on the fuel bowl it'll drain right down into my can down here and not onto the pavement or anywhere else messy so yeah all right so now that we have our hose hooked down below the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our drain valve here there we go You can hear that gurgling that's going into our tank down below. And you definitely want to make sure that when the job's all done to uh, make sure you shut that valve. Honestly, I'll probably even just do it here in a couple seconds just to make sure I don't forget once we're done, just so we know that uh, it's pretty much drained out as far as it needs to be, so it won't come out when I open and pull this fuel line back. All right, so I think we're good at this point, so we can go ahead and shut that valve. All right, so the first thing we do here is we're gonna go ahead and get this nut off of here. We gotta disconnect that. So we got our 5 8 wrench. And it shouldn't, it shouldn't be too hard to twist off of there. All 
I'm just gonna take it, you know, take it slow. And you might end up with a little, little diesel that comes out of here just from the residual, but it won't, it, it won't be anything more than a couple drops. It's not like it's going to go spraying everywhere. There we go. And I could probably do the rest of that by hand. There we are. All right, the easiest way I've found to do this part is you're gonna to wanna to have a couple zip ties. You don't have to do this, this isn't mandatory, but I've found that it's made this job a whole heck of a lot easier. And what you're gonna do with those is you're gonna pull this back, the fuel line out of the way, because when you're trying to work with the regulator there and this thing is right, pressing up against it, can make it pretty difficult. So you're going to just wrap your zip tie around that. Let's see if I can get it here. There we go. Okay. It needs to be under that other one, though. There we go. Okay. And the spot that I've found is just doing it on the uh, the clamp here on your uh, turbo boot. See, and it'll pull it out of the way a little bit and hold it out of the way for you, so you got a little more room to maneuver while you're doing this. All right, so now we're gonna use our Allen wrench to get off, of, uh, get the regulator off of there. And the trick with this part is you wanna do it evenly. Only do a couple turns per side, so it can be kind of tedious, but it's the safest way to do this. <sighs> All right, and now you can see the the spring and the poppet there. Okay. So here's the poppet. You see that hole in the end there? That's what I was talking about that the other one didn't have. So yeah, that's the important part. So yep. And this kit from Riff Raff also includes um, a new O-ring for the regulator housing itself, and then also a crush uh, washer, a new one as well. But I've done this kind of recently, so that one on there is already pretty new, as well as the uh, O-ring that's in the regulator housing, which is that right there. And see, that's the OEM one. You see how the recess in there isn't nearly as pronounced? There's a lot of room for wiggle and misalignment. So yeah, that's why I'm gonna be using the other one.
And the last thing is, look at the spring difference between the gold one and the one that I just pulled out of my truck. And I know that doesn't look like a lot, but in systems such as this, that is. And I'm sure that's just from my spring, just from fatigue over years of being used. So, yep. All right, so we put our new spring, our gold spring here. That goes into the end of the poppet, just like that. And then that's gonna go back into that hole there. Okay. And this is the part where it's really helpful having that zip tied back like that. Because when you're trying to push that thing out of the way at the same time that you're um, trying to put this thing on, it can be pretty difficult. All right, you should be able to see now that the spring is lined up properly. It should look like it's dead center like that. And you see I have the uh, the screws going in at an even pace. So yeah, you're just gonna to wanna to do a couple turns on each side, back and forth until it's snug. Um, you don't have to go ridiculously tight. You basically just want the metal surfaces to be flush with one another. And then, yeah, uh, as soon as that's set up, We'll get our uh, fuel line back on here and we'll get her fired up. All right, so we're all uh, the regulars back on there. So you just want to go snug with the Allen wrench on the tightness of those screws. You don't want to go super tight or go He-Man on it or anything like that. You just want to go until it's snug. And then if, you, if it's too loose and it's leaking a little bit, you can always just tighten them up a little bit. But you don't want to cause damage to the housing or the fuel bowl by cranking on those too hard. All right, so now we're gonna cut our zip ties here. Get that out of the way. Now we're pushing uh, our little stem piece here back into the regulator housing hole. And then we've got our nut here with the crush washer in there. And again, if you've never done this to your truck, your crush washer is probably going to be need to be replaced. You'll be able to tell because it'll be pretty tattered or in pieces. But since I just put one on here recently, I didn't have to change it out. So again, same principle with this. You just want to go, you know, snug, but you don't have to crank on it. Just to the point where the nut is lined up flush with the regulator housing should be perfect. And should just about do it right there. Get the wrench off of there. There we go. So yep, just make sure your um, your fuel lever release valve is closed. That's everything's tightened up and snugged up. Looks good. So uh, let's go ahead and fire her up. All right, so since the fuel bowl's empty, since we had to empty it, we're gonna have to prime it a couple times. So basically how you do that is you just turn it to the, you know, the wait to start position. As soon as it gets done humming, it means the fuel pump's done. 
priming. And then we're going to do that three times. So that was one. So then you turn it back to off. That's two. And that's number three, so we should be good to go. Voila. And it's done. Alrighty guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, until next time, take care.